Hi, so we're going to copper plate a bit of sponge. This is a green scouring sponge as it happens. Uh, it's nylon and they add a little bit of grit to it so you can scour your pans with it. But it's a felt, so it's fairly open weave and actually pretty good for this. Now, you could do lots of different sponges. You've got to be careful when you're plating, you don't make the pore size too small, because if you plate it, you basically block up all the pores. So it's quite an open pore. And all you do really is make it conductive. So cut the size of the bit that you want, get yourself a bit of something like this water resistant conductive ink. And the reason I'm wearing gloves, incidentally, is because this water conductive uh, ink, sorry, this water resistant conductive ink is messy. So all you do is push it around in your ink a little bit and squeeze it out again. So you get a good conductive coating over the entire sponge. Then you leave that to one side to dry. So there it is, once it's dry, and it's just a square of black conductive sponge all ready to plate. Now we're going to copper plate it, and there'll be lots of reasons you'd want a copper sponge. Um, they make very good heat exchangers, for instance, and once you've copper plated it, you can plate it with anything else uh, under using laces solution, and um, use it as battery plates. So that'd be great for that, for instance, for um, nickel oxyhydroxide and iron batteries, or improving lead batteries, or something like that. But to copper plate it is really, really simple. All you do is take your copper plating solution. Now, in here we have 500 millilitres of water, 100 grams of copper sulphate, and 26 millilitres of concentrated sulfuric acid, which is 90, uh, 98%. If you're working with battery acid, clearly just add three times as much acid. It's as simple as that. Bang it on, copper to the positive, what you're going to plate to the negative. Stick it in so that the clip is just above the solution. If you put the clip into the solution, it'll start plating from the clip first. Now you turn it on and you want to start off at 5 volts. And you'll see the amps whack up. We'll leave it at 5 volts for about 5 minutes. And after 5 minutes, turn it down to 1.5 volts leave it, come back, and when it's pink, it's done. Now you need to rotate it around every now and then, because obviously it's a bit sticky out in that one plate. So every now and then, drag it out, turn it round, and clip it down again. And you really don't have to worry about this. I mean, we're talking about one and a half volts. It's like a D cell, there's just nothing in there. So you can pull it in and out as much as you like. Try not to touch those two to get a few too many amps, but it's really not worrying at all. Now, the cleaner you keep this thing, or if you're not going to do a sponge, you're going to do something else, the cleaner you keep the surface, the better it will plate. So if you touch that with your greasy hands, chances are you'll get an area where your finger mark was that won't plate. So not, try not to touch the surface of it uh, if you can, and then you'll get a nice even copper plate. Anyway, just leave it alone and come back to it later. And here it is after a few hours of plating. It's got this nice salmon pink colour and it's actually rock hard now and that is a copper sponge. Now there is of course a um, support there of nylon that you've put in there. Now for a lot of things that won't really matter. I mean if you're going to do a heat exchanger it doesn't really matter, it's not really that hot. But if you want to get rid of that nylon then you have to have sort of a degree of bravery because what you have to do is soak it in concentrated sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid will dissolve the nylon, but not the copper. So you leave it in sulfuric acid for a few hours until the nylon is dissolved, and you're left with a pure copper conductive sponge. Okay, I'm wearing gloves this time because in there is 98% sulfuric acid, and you'll see it's gone from its sort of straw yellow colour to this greeny kind of yellow, and that's because the green of the sponge has been busily dissolving. Now it's been in there for about an hour and you can see that the sponge is actually coming out quite nicely and we're getting the residual of it there. So I'll leave that overnight and that will give me a clean copper sponge ready to use. If you don't want to use a sulfuric acid because you find it a bit scary, don't do it. Just accept the fact that you've got a nylon background in your copper sponge. Once you've done your copper sponge, you can do other things with it like plate it in the lacy solution. As an aside, um, the lacy solution, which is from a safe electroplating method, will not plate onto carbon, unfortunately, which is why we've had to go this route. It'll plate onto copper, and it'll plate just about anything onto copper, so we've had to put a copper layer on first, so that we can then plate onto that copper layer, because the uh, lacy won't plate directly onto the carbon. And that's a bit of a shame, but also the way it goes. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.